Hey, what's going on, everybody? Today, we're going to talk about, we got an interesting topic for you today. It's real, it's real funny. It's called the, the Mexican Shakedown. The motherfuckers, man, they keep shaking me down, taking money from, from us. Like, I'm not rich, man. I work hard for my money. Shit, just like y'all do, just like everybody else. Stop shaking us down. Anybody who's been to, not everybody, but a lot of people who's been to Cancun or even uh, Playa del Carmen or, or Tulum, they may have experienced this, getting shook down by the Mexican police. Um, being that we coming from America or, or you may be coming from Europe or you know other places that they deem, you know, it, well, just being a tourist really. And you know, they feel all tourists coming there have money. So a lot of times, you know, we may, we may end up making some sort of mistake or you know, doing something that, you know, draws police attention and they, you know, they're not looking to arrest you. That's the one good thing, you know, as a black man living in America, you know, sometimes you get stopped by the police, you just never know if you're gonna even make it out that situation. But in Mexico, you know, you feel comfortable. You're like, all right, you know, I know more, more than likely, they just probably want a couple of dollars out of me. And so that's what we're gonna talk about today. Like I, I had a funny story that happened to me, but I, I done got stopped in Mexico, Colombia, Thailand, Brazil, um, and it's the same. It, it, it was the same situation in majority of places. Like they just they scare you, hit you with a couple of fear tactics, and then they go in for the you know for the ass. Like oh, I can help you with this. So I'm gonna just give you a couple of tips that could kind of help you out. Um, if you end up in a situation, um, and then definitely, if you got any tips or suggestions, um, definitely put those in the comments below that, you know, you can help out other people, like we're a community. So let's try to help each other out so we can navigate these situations much better. But um, I know I just, I just came back from Mexico last month. Uh, I was out there for my brother's wedding and we got stopped by the police twice, both times. They wanted money. They shook us down. Um, the first time my brother, he was driving, mm -hmm. I think he might have ran a red light or something like that, or, or he ran a stop sign. And so they stopped him. You know, of course they pulled us over, you know, they like license, registration, whatever. And um, they're like, yeah, why you ran a stop sign? Uh, it was, you know, that's, that's an offense. You know, we might have to take you to jail. You gotta see the judge. You know, they just start layering on the fears and fears and just, you know, trying to scare you. And then they be like, okay, well, I mean, um, you know, if you don't want to see the judge, then, you know, I can help you, you know, I can help you. As soon as you hear that, you know, like, oh, you can help me? How can we make this go away? Cause you know, most people, they be scared. They're like, yo, I'll do anything to get out of it. I don't want to, you know, be locked up abroad. Cause you see all those TV shows or hear all these stories and things like even looking at the, the Britney Griner situation. And so you're like, all right, what, what, whatever you need, how can I make this go away? And then a lot of times they'll hit you with a, a price. Uh, in Mexico, a lot of I think they be I think they they start with like a thousand pesos. That's probably like around sixty bucks or something like that. But more than likely, they really will try to get whatever you got on you. So if you got more than that, say you got three hundred dollars in your pocket and your wallet, they trying to take the whole three hundred dollars from you. So you got to be a little cautious. One thing I realized is like okay. If they trying to take all the money in my wallet, I'm gonna just make sure I don't have the money all in my wallet. I'm gonna spread it out to all my different body parts, maybe put some of my in my sneaker or something. Um, there's this one funny funny story, like when, when we got stopped by the police, um, the first time I, I really didn't have that much cash on me at the time. So I think they probably only got like $40 out of, out of us. But the second time my brother got stopped, he was speeding. But he wasn't even speeding. Matter of fact, I can't even say he was speeding. It was no speed limits, no signs, no nothing on the on the street, and it was like a dark. It was a dark road going through the jungle from La Valletta to the beach strip. Cars was passing us, speeding way faster than us. I think they only stopped us because we might have had rental tags, so they knew we wasn't from there. Um, so I already knew the the routine. They stopped us. I already took. Out, I had a bunch of money on me too at this time, so I just took out the majority of the money that I had threw it under my seat. And so I probably only had like 200 Mexican pesos on me. And so um, when they came, you know, one came to his side, the driver's side, one came to my side, I was in the passenger. 
and they just start hitting us with the fear, the fear tactics. We already know the game because we got stopped a, a hundred times by, by the police out there. And then they hit you, okay, I can help you. You know, I can help you. Um, and I'm like, they, they give their price. I think they asked for probably like 2,000 pesos or something like that. They wanted some bread this time. And we like, they like, he, he trying to negotiate and they like, nah, 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 we ain't hearing it. So I'm like, yo, you can't, you don't even gotta do all of that. I just gave him whatever I had. I think I had 200 pesos, that's probably like 10, 15 bucks, something like that. And I start showing the cop on my side, my wallet, this is empty because I already threw all the money under the seat. So I'm like, look, that's all we got. We don't got no more money. And I guess once he seen that my wallet was empty and we really didn't have no more because I just gave him whatever was in my wallet. He talked to his partner and was like, all right, you know, yeah, y'all go ahead or whatever. They just took whatever we got. and was like, all right, y'all go ahead. And so that's that's one of the best ways to get out of, you know, if they if they come to shake you down. But you got you to gotta be on your P's and Q's. You got to be aware, you gotta be aware of your surroundings. You got to know, like, I right, um, try not to do anything that could cause any police attention. Like, you don't want to, you know, run those stop signs. You don't want to speed. You don't want to, um, if you got the mopeds, this, I'm going to give you my story. This it is it kind of funny, but I had the moped. And I think we was going to the club. We was going, we was staying in La Valletta. And if you know La Valletta, that's like the, it's a nice area, up and coming area of Tulum. They got a bunch of dope Airbnbs and hotels and, and condos and things like that. But they don't have no roads, no paved roads at all whatsoever. It's a bunch of potholes and dirt roads and things like that. So it's crazy. But they, they, built, a, they built a path directly from La Valletta to the beach strip. So you could go to Tapu, Rosa Negra, all of those places. And so we was going out one night and I'm the only one who had the moped. And my friends, they all jumped in the taxi. So I said, all right, cool, I'm gonna follow y'all. I'm gonna follow y'all on my moped. I, you know, I didn't wanna have to jump in the taxi and come back with them. So I said, I'm gonna just get around on my own. I'm gonna follow y'all in the, in the moped. So the, the, the taxi driver, he started going through this, um, this dirt road through the jungles. There's no lights whatsoever on this dirt road. It's scary as a motherfucker. I'm trying to follow them. The taxi is leaving me. Yo, whenever he leave me, he taking the light with him because I'm in a moped. The light on a moped was only going like five feet in front of me. And there's no other light. So that means I really can't see shit. It's pitch black. Like, I'm, I was shook. I'm like, yo, I just be thinking the craziest thing. So I'm like, yo, somebody could just be standing there waiting for me. As soon as I come up, they knock me off the bike, rob me, kidnap me, whatever. So, you know, we in Mexico, we in another country. So I'm a little shook going through that shit. So we finally make it to the beach strip. You know, we party, have fun, and they jump in the taxi. I know they going right back that same way. So I'm like, yo, I'm not following y'all. I'm gonna take the regular street you know, with the well lit up street, and I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go the way that I know. I'm, it's gonna take longer, but I'm gonna get there, and I ain't gotta worry about nothing crazy happening to me. Boy, was I wrong. So I go. I I go. I they go the way they go. I go the way I go. And as soon as I leave that beach strip, cops see me. Boom, pull over. I ain't have my helmet on. He pulled me over. He's um, where's your helmet? Uh, I forgot the helmet at home. Give me your license. I give him my license. He's like, okay. No helmet. You ain't getting this license back unless you give me a thousand pesos. I'm like, what? He like, I don't got a thousand pesos. He's like, I don't care. You better get a thousand pesos. You ain't getting your license back. I'm like, yeah, that's crazy. I'm like, all right, so where? Like, he like, you go to the ATM or something. I'm like, where's the ATM? Ain't no ATM over here. He's like, yeah, it's ATM. You gotta go down that road, down there. Five minutes down that road, it's gonna be this hotel, and they got an ATM in there. Like, he knew all that. Like, he, he already got the whole thing mapped out. He probably do it to 100 people, 1,000 people. Anyway, I'm like, fuck, I need my license. So I go down that road. This road is just as pitch black and dark as the road I was trying to avoid. Like, I was shook again, like, damn. Anyway, but I'm like, yo, I need my license. So I'm like, I, I just hope, I prayed. I'm like, I hope nothing happened to me. I finally make it to that hotel, take out the thousand pesos. That's like 60 bucks or something like that. And then I, and then I, um, I go back. 
I give him the I give him the the, six, the thousand pesos, sixty bucks, and uh, he like I right, he give me my ID. He like I right, go ahead. So then I go, and um, I'm driving. Mind you, when he stopped me, I'm still like fifteen minutes away from from the, the Airbnb I was staying at. So I still had a ways to go. So I finally I finally um leave him. I'm back on it, no helmet. I finally get to the main strip, the downtown area now, because we were staying close to the downtown area. So that's the 307 Central or whatnot. And I, I don't know if you've been on there, but cops be riding through that shit all the time. But it's late at night, so I'm hoping no cops is there. But nah, sure enough, I'm on there, cops pull up, pull me over, stop. I'm like, oh shit. He like, hey, where's your helmet? I'm like, I don't got no helmet. He like, oh, I'm gonna have to take you to jail. I'm like, I'm like, nah, what you talking about? He like, nah, he like, he like, listen, the only way you're not gonna go in, thousand pesos. And once he said that shit, I spaz, I flipped. I was like, no, fuck that. I don't got no thousand pesos. I'm not giving you a thousand pesos. I was like, your amigo just shook me down for a thousand pesos. So I'm not giving you nothing at all. I was like, I don't have nothing. And he was like, what? I was like, listen, I don't got nothing. Your amigo just got me for a thousand pesos. I don't got nothing else on me. He was like, how much? I said a thousand pesos. That's how much you got for me. And he was like, and I guess that's the magic number that they probably try to hit everybody for a thousand pesos. So once I said that, that's when he was like, oh, he was like, oh, all right, cool. He was like, all right, fine, go ahead. I was like, whew. So I, I dodged that one. I wasn't giving him a thousand anyway. I don't know what I was gonna do. Or I was just gonna figure a way to finagle my way out of that shit. But he was not getting no no more bread out of me. Anyway, so I made it back to to the Airbnb. I'm like, All right, I'm definitely gonna make sure I got my helmet whenever I take this moped out. But that's it. Just make sure make sure you're on your p's and q's. Another thing, if you're coming into that country, I done been to a lot of countries, and I, I take Bud with me to a lot of places I go to, and for the most part, it's cool. Um, you know, if you get out your, your state, your country, wherever with the butt, then nine times out of ten, you good. But Mexico, on the other hand, they do some random searching once you get through customs. So after you, they done checked your passport and you done went through customs, they randomly select people, pull people. Like, as you walking out of the airport, they randomly grab you and pull you and say, yo, we're going to search your bag. So knowing that, Whenever I'm going to Mexico, I be extra cautious. You know, I'm not telling you to do this, but if you happen to try to bring any bud to Mexico, make sure you you, you very good at and and you know packaging that shit very discreetly, and you can hide it to where it can be found. Like I have a friend that um, I have a friend that you know randomly selected her for the search. You know, and she had probably like an eighth, which is 3.5 grams. Um, small amount, very small amount. They found it in her bag. Oh, hit her with the scare tactics. Oh, yeah, we're going we gonna to have to take you to jail. I'm sorry. You know, and they and they, just, they they played it out for a while. Like, they just kept hitting her with stuff. You know, you probably got to see the judge. It was her birthday weekend, too. They was like, yeah, you probably got to see the judge, but you're going to see the judge on Monday. And this was like a Friday. So she, like, shook. She like, I can't go to no messenger. She like, I, I want to enjoy my birthday. She like, what the fuck? So they just kept hitting her shit. Then it was like, you know, we could do something about this. We can help you. Like, yeah, she like, well, what, what, what can we do? They like, yeah, I need this, we need some money. They was like, you gotta give us all, you gotta give us some money. I don't know if they hit her with a number or what, or if they just took everything that she had in her wallet at the time, but I know she ended up paying them like $200. So if you don't want to get hit for no bread, definitely don't keep that much money on you. Like if you going, if you going to Mexico and you know you got butt on you, just keep like $20 on you, $40, you know, something you don't mind. If they did stop you and you get caught something they don't mind, um, you know, you don't mind them taking. Cause she gave them the $200, they gave her the butt back and said, go enjoy your vacation. So that's, they don't, they don't, all they want is the money. You know what I mean? That's why I say like people feel safe again, stopped by the cops in other countries. Cause you know, they just want to likely want some bread. But it's here in America, you don't know what they want. They could just want to ruin your day just for the hell of it or, or end your life. But in, in Mexico, yeah, they just want bread. So make sure you keep you don't keep that much bread on you if you know you might be doing something illegal or 
if you, you know, for whatever reason, you know, use your card a little bit more. Um, and then if they do, if they do stop you, you know, you gotta, you gotta act a little bit, put on a little show, but, um, I'm gonna keep it short. Like, I just wanted to give y'all some of these tips, um, suggestions, give you my story. I know it's a lot of people that go to Cancun, Tulum, whether you've been there before. If you've been there before, definitely drop some of your stories in the comments or, or give us some suggestions, some tips on how we can avoid it or ways that we can get out of it. Uh, I'm sure other people may want to know because there's a lot of people that's going to continue going to Cancun, Tulum, and, and Playa del Carmen, or even other countries. And, and these suggestions could definitely help them. So definitely drop those in the comments down below. Um, please like, subscribe, and um, turn on the, the notifications too. I'm gonna be dropping a lot more content like this. And I definitely want you to um, get all of the gems and, and nuggets that I'm gonna drop. Um, drop some, some reviews on some of the dope places that I've been to. Um, yeah, so definitely subscribe, like, comment, share, share this video with whoever you know. Whoever you know going to Mexico, share this video with them. Um, and I appreciate y'all for, for listening and watching my YouTube. Thank you.